if Daisy Ducati knows the cross-eyed porn star because she's a Vegas local. Remember I told you that there was, a, there was a professional dominatrix slash porn star who lives in Las Vegas. That is cross-eyed. cross-eyed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I salivated. She, and when she wears glasses, her eyes are fixed, but when she takes them off, they're like, Whoa. <laughs> Well, there's a movie where that happens. I mean, um, and it's like, and it's just that dumb. She's, they're like, it's, oh, Was it Eugene Levy? Maybe. It's just like a really pretty girl. Like best in and show? They, and then they take off her glasses, and she's like, and she just looks all fucked oh, up. Oh, is it a girl? Yeah. Because uh, I, know, I, know, I know Eugene Levy can do that. I don't know. Cause he had, he played a character. I think it was a bested show. Well, first of all, he's like, I couldn't dance. She wanted me to dance with her, but I had I couldn't because I had two left feet. And then like they, he literally has like two left feet. But he also when he takes his glasses off, or it might have been waiting for Guffman when he takes his glasses off. He's like, Bark. he's cross-eyed with Adam. <laughs> puts her back on. Dude, she's literally like that. And also, she's like super skinny, like anorexic skinny. Ugh. Like, it's really disturbing. I can't be told what to do by a skinny woman, dude. That's... The whole time, I'd just be like, Ugh. No, don't buy me dinner. Yuck. Hey. You need the dinner, bitch. Yeah, I know. I know God I'm damn skinny. It. When I come home, I expect a my lettuce to be sitting on the table ready for me <laughs> to throw up but she's a lit Vegas local I, I gotta imagine they know each other probably probably porn stars are just like midgets they all know each other somehow well this Weird. is a specific brand of porn star this is the this fetish I, I fuck you in the butt you fuck me in the butt? Well, no. She fucks guys in the butt. Daisy does? Yes. You oh, I didn't that? know that. No, I've never watched No, her. she works for a company called kink.com uh, in San Francisco. Uh, they have a thing called Divine Bitches, and the entire premise of it is it's her women pegging dudes. Fucking guys, pegging guys, fucking guys in front of other guys, and then they eat this jizz off her snatch and shit. How does the jizz get to her snatch? Because the other guy fucks her. Oh! There's a bowl and then there's the cup. Oh, okay. Now I get what you mean. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, she puts the clamps on the nipples and then yanks them off. Really? I don't Yeah, I think so. That's wild. It's all kinds of stuff. She's so nice. <laughs> yeah, it's never the ones you, you, you expect. That's what I no. learned a long time ago is, uh, especially uh, with like younger girls, the girls always talk about well, what slits they are and the kinky stuff they like to do. And they're like, yeah, you're full of shit. It's the ones that you don't expect that are quiet. Those are the ones that are murderers, too, just yes. like Ted Bundy. Yeah. Yep, that's the Or that's just the o- other women, because they, they're murderers of the human psyche. Yep. You guys emotionally drain us. Oh, all right, Heather Knox. It's a good name. Weight 125. She's and it's all in her smile. Most of the fat is in her smile. From Indianapolis. I'm determined to use this amazing opportunity to learn more about myself and my ultimate path. A manly man. Her turn-ons are a manly man who is secure with himself. She's got great handwriting. Knows how to make me laugh and is chivalrous in huge letters. She spells good too. Egotistical meathead types a la Jersey Shore. But what about that sensitive guy from Jersey Shore? The guy was always Vinny? in that obsessive... No, the, well, yeah, Vinny too. But the big guy who was in that obsessive relationship with the fucking... Oh, Ronnie? Ronnie, yeah. He was a scumbag too. Why was he a scumbag? Because he would dance with other girls just because him and Sam had a little fight. Oh, and then yeah. he would blame it on tequila. Uh, he would say, I'm just drinking that Patron. That's half of that show is them doing some fucked up shit and just being like dude I drink this certain type of liquor and it just makes me do that hey is there an um yeah like when like when booze uh, makes yeah it makes like Mel Gibson hate Jews on average I can't drink tequila it makes me hate Jews I think that was the movie The Passion of the Christ <laughs> thank you 
Hey, oh, he was the whole making, time. Yeah, he was drunk the whole time he made that movie. He's fucking hammered, and he was just like, dude, I'm why sorry. did they why did they do this to Jesus? Yeah, when I cast the Jesus Jewish... Jesus is such a good guy. When I cast all the Jewish characters, I was drunk on tequila. I, just, I specifically wanted them to have huge noses and be shifty. That was the one casting I was happy I didn't have to cast a black. All right. She's inspired by music. Is there a tequila called Tequila Mockingbird? Cause that's really offensive if there is. It would it would make at the very least a good name for a um, cocktail, a tequila based mixed drink. That's you should Google that because that's probably a cocktail that's geared toward black people who've been falsely accused of rape. And I'm inspired by music. I love listening to different genres. And relating the lyrics to my personal ups and downs, like the fucking Beatles, right? What makes me smile? Close friends and family. My grandparents mean the world to me, and I don't know where I'd be at without them. Probably having less butterscotch. Be your. Oh my gosh, I think she wrote. Hold on. Then she wrote, "I love you. I heart you." Exclamation point. Hold on. So let's go over this again. My grandparents mean the world to me, and I don't know where I'd be without them. I heart you, as if her grandparents are reading this issue of Playboy. Tequila Mockingbird cocktails with a literary twist. Okay. It's a book that uh, it's a recipe book for cocktails, oh. and it says it features sixty-five delicious drinks. Okay. For whom the it's rum a, tolls. It's the world's best-selling cocktail book for the literary obsessed. Wow. It's like most people that are into literature are also alcoholics, right? That's a that's a thing, right? Yeah. Good old Hemingway. Yeah, yeah. That motherfucker went well, down dude, with some I, sauce. Well, it's a lot easier to write when you're drunk. Sauce. That was what Charles Bukowski used to do. He used to have a bottle of wine, and then he would write for about three hours. Then he beat the shit out of his wife for like 15 minutes. We can watch take that clip. That's, there's probably no copyright on that clip. What I told clip? you about it one time where he kicks his wife off the couch that one time. We can go play that. Hold on, my, my shit's almost done. I'm gonna go see if it's ready. Okay. I don't wanna get no rankles. Be aggressive. B E aggressive. B E A G G R E S S S I V E. You never heard that song? Yeah. I've been on a Faith No More kick lately. Be aggressive. 